Hello, this is Dr. Loach from humanbodyhelp.com. Today I'm going to be running through the bones and the structures of the hand. Now what we see right here are three sets of bones. We've got the carpal bones, which are wrist bones. We've got the metacarpal bones, which would end up being in the palm of your hand. And then we've got the phalanges. Okay, and we have 14 different phalanges. You can see we've got two phalanges in the thumb, on the thumb side, and then three phalanges in each of the other fingers, which add up to 14, not 15. Remember, there's only two phalanges in the thumb. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back to the wrist bones right here, and these wrist bones are sometimes challenging to remember. One thing you can do to remember things is to chunk them or break them into smaller chunks, smaller sections. So what I like to do is break these up into two rows of four. One, two, three, four. And if I use the pointer, it might be easier for you to see. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. Okay. Now, they do have names, and my best recommendation would be to memorize the names, start with the thumb, and then count over from there. Okay. Now, starting with the thumb, we can start with this bone right here, which is the trapezium. The next bone over would be the trapezoid, then the capitate, and then the hamate. And the hamate has this little hook on it. And that hook you can use to help you identify whether you've landed on the right bone. Okay. So hamate, this is called the hamulus of the hamate, or hook of the hamate. Hook and hamulus mean the same thing. Okay, so again, that first row that I went through, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, hamate. The next row, scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, and then pisiform. Okay, again, scaphoid, whoops, scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, and then pisiform. Right, so those are the two rows of four carpal bones. We then have the metacarpal bones, and the metacarpal bones are just named metacarpal number one, starting with the thumb, metacarpal number one, metacarpal number two, number three, number four, and number five. Now each metacarpal has a head, a body, and a base. Okay, so each one has a base, each one has the body, and each one has a head. Okay. Then we've got the phalanges, and there's going to be different names for the different phalanges. Okay, if I were to use this fifth digit over here, fifth finger, starting with the thumb, counting over one, two, three, four, five, this fifth digit right here, or sometimes called the pinky, would have three phalanges in it, a proximal, a middle, and a distal phalange. Sometimes this is called a proximal phalanx, a middle phalanx, and a distal phalanx. Okay? Phalange or phalanx, they mean the same thing. Okay? Now this side, digit number one where the thumb is, this digit number one only has two phalanges, so we say the proximal and distal phalanx. No middle phalanx here. Okay? There are saddle joints here between the trapezium and the first metacarpal. Okay, and we say metacarpal and not metatarsal when we're talking about bones in the hand. Okay, carpals refers to wrist, metacarpals refers to the bones in the palm of the hand. Tarsals would be found in the foot. And one way to remember that is you drive a car with your hands on the steering wheel and you step on tar with your feet. So tarsals, feet, carpals, hand. Okay. So we've got a saddle joint right here, and this saddle joint is going to allow this bone, this metatar metacarpal, whoops, metacarpal, to be able to be positioned over the palm of the hand so that we can oppose our thumbs. If I use my hand like this, it allows for this movement right here. You can see 
the first metacarpal, because of that saddle joint, is going to be able to come up and over the palm so that the thumb can be positioned to the other side of the hand, the opposite side of the hand. Uh, here's the capitate bone right here, and this capitate bone almost forms like a capstone in an arch. Okay, so this is a nice supporting bone of the wrist. Um, the pisiform is a, a small rounded bone you can feel when you uh, touch your hand right here. If you were to put the crease of your thumb, the crease of your thumb on the pisiform bone, and then fold your thumb over, you would then land on the hook of the hammy right there. So you would go like this and land on the hook of the hammy or hamulus. The scaphoid bone right here oftentimes gets fractured when someone lands on an outstretched hand. Uh, that bone is located in here, uh, right in that uh, space known as the anatomical snuff box. Uh, if there's pain in the anatomical snuff box, it could be that the scaphoid bone has been fractured, and this scaphoid bone is really difficult to heal. Uh, it'll often fracture at the neck where it's very thin here, uh, but what happens is the blood supply comes in from this side of the bone, and if you fracture here, this side of the bone won't get perfused with blood very well. So this is a surgical, uh, requires surgical intervention to attach this bone to this part that gets the blood supply so this bone will not die. Uh, and cause problems for someone later on. Uh, the lunate bone, this bone right here, this lunate bone, if I were to take it off, uh, you could see that it looks like a crescent moon. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.